It looks to me like exactly what was intended by those that brought the case in the first place. Uh, the idea was to kick the ball into the deep, deep grass uh, so as to try and confuse everybody and effectively delay the Brexit process. And I, you know, uh, whatever happens in this judgment, uh, it seems to me that there are 17.4 million people who were asked to make a decision. Our elected representatives said, please make a decision. And now they've got a decision they don't like, they're doing everything they can to delay it or perhaps even reverse it. OK. European Union starting to creak and potentially fall apart. How does that make you feel? Uh, delighted. Um, I think the European Union is a, is a force for bad, not a force for good. You know, it may have had, a, back in the 50s, a very good intentions of bringing France and Germany together um, and getting us to be friendly neighbours living in the same street, uh, but it's turned into something uh, that has, frankly, uh, done enormous social damage and economic damage to large, large parts of the European continent. Uh, it has destroyed the concept of nation-state democracy. It is leading to a rise of all sorts of political extremisms and tensions. And I, I've always said, I don't just want the United Kingdom out of the European Union, I want Europe out of the European Union. No more flags, no more anthems, no more unelected old men in Brussels. I'm intrigued to know what you think about this uh, rise of far-right parties, Marine Le Pen in France, Gert Wilders um, in Holland, Norbert Hoffers in uh, Austria. Um, why do you think that is happening? Because what the project's done, it's taken away from people their ability through the ballot box to be in charge of their own futures. I mean, if you live in Greece, it doesn't matter a damn who you vote for to be the Greek government, because how much you can spend on your schools, what your tax rate will be, aren't set in the Greek parliament. They're set by the bosses that run the Eurozone. So is it any surprise that the Greeks have gone towards a very hard left-wing party in the shape of Syriza? In other uh, parts of the European Union, uh, Mrs Merkel opening up the doors unconditionally to anybody last year meant that she'd done it not just on behalf of Germany but on the whole of the Schengen area. So there you've got parties that you would define as being on the right. You know, what we're seeing, and particularly with Italy yesterday, what we're seeing is the European Union project is dying before your very eyes. I don't know how long it will take, but I'm certain that its days are finished. Yeah, I mean, I suppose another way of looking at that is that the Union's guarded against the longest period of peace since the Napoleonic Wars, as you know. Um, your article that I read today in the no, Telegraph... No, no, no. Let me just Let me just finish. Uh, your article that I read today in the Telegraph speaks of frustration, anger, boiling point, all words that I'm quoting directly from you. Should you not just cool it a little bit? No, I mean, I think, actually, to be honest with you, if you look at the role the European Union played in the Balkans, uh, arguably, it helped create quite a big war, uh, you know, within this European time zone. Look, I've always said, getting the French and Germans together in the 1950s to reconcile and break bread, of course that was a good thing. But I, I do not buy the idea that the European Union has been a guarantor of our peace. In fact, I would think NATO had rather more to do with it. And when I see their expansionist policies into places like the Ukraine, then frankly all we've done is to provoke, uh, you know, a Putin. So, so I'm, I'm not convinced, heading on from here, that peace is what it's about. And I'll quote you Tony Blair. Tony Blair said the European Union used to be a project of peace. It is now a project about power. And the point is, where should power be? Should it be with European institutions or should it be with the people in their respective nation states? And what we've seen with Brexit and what we've seen with Renzi's resignation is that we're clearly moving back to the concept of nation state democracy, which I think means we'll all get on better and perhaps be just a little bit richer too. OK, but are you not provoking by using those words that I highlighted, frustration, anger, boiling point? What are you trying to achieve by, by saying things like that? Well, well, well 17.4 million people in the greatest democratic exercise in the history of our nation, despite all the threats and all the bullying from the big businesses and global leaders and most of our own political class, voted for this country to change direction. And now what we see are, you know, the Cleggs and the Farrans and the Millibands and perhaps even Mr Corbyn, uh, the Anna Subris, many in, in the Tory party. What they want to do is to delay and frustrate the result. Uh, they, they're trying to keep us part of the single market which we so clearly voted against. And that is making people not just frustrated but increasingly angry and they're right to feel like that. No longer leader of UKIP, how would you like your tenure to have been viewed? 
I would like my tenure to be viewed as having taken a fringe, tiny political party, mocked, laughed at and derided by absolutely every single one of you, and I took it to being a mainstream political party whose views were absolutely what the people of this country were talking about and had become majority opinions. But I want that referendum result that we got on June the 23rd to actually happen, and I'm worried at the moment by all the forces that are trying to undermine that and by a Prime Minister who at the moment is giving us no leadership and no direction whatsoever. OK, so if Article 50 is not triggered uh, by the end of March for all sorts of reasons, not least because of what's happening at the Supreme Court at the moment, what are you going to do about it? Oh, well, I think that uh, if Brexit doesn't mean Brexit, uh, you know, if we don't get back the control of our borders, the ability to make our laws, our fishing waters, all those things that we clearly voted for back in June, if those things don't happen, then I would say this to you. If, if you think Brexit was a political earthquake in British politics in 2016, well, then you ain't seen nothing yet because there would be a major realignment, in my view, of British politics ahead of 2020 and some results that are probably you know, difficult for anybody right at this moment to contemplate. Those 17.4 million people meant it and they're going to go on meaning it too. Major realignment, what does that mean? Uh, what it means is that, that they will change even more fundamentally than they have in the last few years, the ways in which they vote. Uh, and I think that uh, my successor, Paul Nuttall, has actually taken over UKIP at a very fortuitous time. Not only do we see a, a, a Conservative Party where the Cabinet contradict each other every single day and where the Prime Minister doesn't tell us actually where we're going, uh, but they see a Labour Party uh, that now seems to have joined the club that wants to frustrate the democratic will of the British people. OK. So does that mean that you'll um, be more active within UKIP again, or are you thinking about setting up another party? Oh, no. I'm, I'm, right now, I'm in Lincolnshire. Uh, there's a by-election taking place on Thursday of this week, and I'm here campaigning. You know, I haven't run for the hills. I haven't disappeared, never to be seen again. Uh, I'm still very much supporting UKIP, but mercifully, I don't have to deal with day-to-day -day party politics, administration, fundraising and all those things that have dominated my life over the last decade. But you like being in the spotlight, though, don't you? You're on the telly more often than I am. <laughs> well, uh, some of that's pure coincidence, obviously. Look, I want to be part of this political debate. And, and actually, I think freed from the constraints of party politics, I could probably do just as much to push the arguments to make Brexit happen.